Hello and good morning and good afternoon, everybody, depending on where in the world you are. My name is uh, Rich Stambik. I work for Martech and I will be your host at uh, this webinar about Laura Wan in the Smart City Vertical. Um, I understand we have a fair amount of attendees on the webinar today, so feel free to use uh, the chat box or the Q&A box to put forward any questions you might have during the webinar. We will try to answer them either either during the webinar or afterwards, all depending on how much time we have. And with that, I would like to kick off uh, with a brief introduction of, uh, of the LoRaWAN technology and the LoRaWAN Alliance. Richard, could you speak a little bit up, please? Of course I can. It might be a little bit quiet here. I'll try to move closer to the microphone and also speak a little bit louder. So uh, let's start looking a little bit at the LoRa Alliance and the LoRa WAN technology. First of all, we've seen a number of uh, LoRa WAN network operators appear over the past years. Today, there are uh, 100 plus, 120 uh, network operators or companies, enterprises operating LoRa WAN networks across the world in more than 140 countries. And this is, uh, this is spreading as we speak. Uh, it's one of the most widely deployed WAN access technologies on the planet right now, actually. Uh, please, if we can take the next slide. Uh, it's also worth looking at the market and the market potential. So um, IHS, a little while ago, did a survey where they uh, looked at various LP WAN, low power wide area network technologies. And it's encouraging to see, uh, see LoRa having a prominent position here. It's also no surprise to see that cellular technologies like uh, NB-IoT and also LTE-CAT-M are there. And we should bear in mind that these technologies, while they do differ from a technical point of view, the main difference is in the deployment model, the architecture, the business model, etc. We'll, we'll come back to that. Next slide, please. Now, why would we want to use LoRa WAN? There are some key factors uh, to take into account here, of course, Probably the most prominent one is the flexible deployment options. As I said, um, the model with which you deploy, private or public, capex or opex business model, uh, managed or outsourced, etc., that maps very well to business case and the use case. And that is probably one of the most prominent factors here. Also, the fact that it's a future proof, open standard technology. It's not a proprietary solution. It's there for anybody to use and with a wide ecosystem building up as we speak. Then, a few technology centric differentiators geolocation services, uh, um, location based services can be done and is done today using uh, LoRa networks. It's secure. There is a dedicated application and network signaling path inherent in the LoRaWAN standard. Very energy efficient, uh, ensuring we get long battery lives, even for small, small battery powered sensors and actuators. And also a separation into different device classes with different characteristics and, and uh, performance profiles. Um, Coverage in rural and non-cellular areas, i.e. the ability to deploy where and when you need coverage. We aren't constrained by existing infrastructure. It is from a business and architecture point of view, perfectly feasible for anybody to deploy where and when needed. And a key factor in connected and smart cities, uh, deep indoor penetration and deep penetration into areas which otherwise might not be well served by alternative access technologies. Next slide, please. So looking a little bit at the technologies at hand, we all probably know the monikers LAN, um, cellular and LP1. In the LAN camp, we're gonna find, as, the, as it says on the tin, short to medium range, normally unlicensed technologies, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, ZBA, et cetera. Very good for short range communication, but not always so power efficient. And also the penetration ability is not not exactly up to scratch in all cases. Cellular technology, widely deployed, long range communication, good for an OPEX uh, focused business model, but not always so energy efficient and also sometimes costly. Uh, but the main issue here is the business model. You have little or no ability at this point in time to deploy your own private network, should you so wish. And also the availability in 
uh, uh, urban as well as non-urban areas can sometimes be, be questioned. Uh, LP1 technologies, short or long range, long battery life, um, very easily accessible infrastructure, flexibility, as I said before, good penetration, uh, firmware over there update, etc. Not so good though for high bandwidth consuming applications. So this is, this is dedicated for small devices consuming little bandwidth over long distances with lots of flexibility on the deployment. Next slide, please. So the key thing here, key differentiating factor is the ecosystem. There's a multitude of actors offering products and services in the LoRaWAN ecosystem from sensors actuators on one end of the architecture through the radio access network, LoRa gateways and LoRa base stations to the core network, i.e. The, the back end where signaling terminates to the data analytics, visualization and monetization where data is managed and anything in between and anything around like systemization houses, test houses, system integrators, etc. Um, there's a fair amount of partners. Um, uh, I think most of them as of mid this year are listed on this slide and we are more than happy to talk more about who these are and what they do uh, in the Q&A. Next slide, please. Wide range of vertical industry areas where LoRaWAN is deployed today and a multitude of use cases from, from the uh, performance critical ones, say energy utility, and oil and gas and industrial, to the non-urban like uh, uh, asset tracking and agriculture, to the urban ones, connected city, connected building, uh, logistics, uh, asset tracking, we mentioned fleet management, supply chain, the use cases are literally all over the place. Whenever a WAN uh, low power private network, private or public, we should say, private or public network is required. So today we're gonna to focus in on some of the key use cases in connected cities. Next slide, please. But before I hand over to the first speaker, let's just mention one more thing on the Law Alliance side. Certification, and this is a key thing the Law Alliance is offering. It's basically mechanisms from test tools to connection to certification and test houses, ensuring that all devices, all services, and all operational services, et cetera, play well together. So it's all there. The Law Alliance has it all in its fold, and that comes back to the ecosystem I just mentioned. Everything to go and deploy and get all the way to a positive business case is in essence there in the LoRaWAN ecosystem. Next slide, please. And with that, I would like to introduce uh, Yat Toast from Vigamondo. Uh, Yat, he has a sales background, more than 25 years in sales, taking solutions from scratch in a team effort and now turning this into million, multi-million dollar deals. He built successful relationships with customers and uh, his credo is think out of the box and team effort. He's grown and built successful sales organizations from startups to mid-stage companies and has an extensive network of national and international contacts. Over to you, Yad. Thank you, uh, Richard, for this fantastic introduction uh, that you just uh, did. Uh, I hope we can do that uh, many times. Um, yeah, Digimondo, why did Digimondo start a company um, yeah, we wanted a smarter and better world through digitization. Um, simplify and simple, those are the key words within our company because we want to make IoT automation as simple as possible uh, and it should be uh, available for everyone uh, in the world and for every industry. So what we did is we simplified digital transformation, automation, and especially visualization of IoT. And that last thing, the visualization, is what you see uh, in all our uh, solutions. Um, instead of focusing on the nitty gritty, the technical details, uh, we are focusing on the visualization of our solution. And everybody should be able to use uh, IoT for anything uh, to ensure a safe uh, and also efficient work environment. Uh, the company uh, Digimondo is based in Hamburg 
And uh, as I just explained, uh, we uh, provide IoT software solutions. Uh, we have a large team of uh, specialists who are specialized uh, on IoT. They know everything on the sensor market. Um, and um, when there are new sensors in the market, they are the ones uh, to investigate that and to see uh, how that works. So the company Digimondo develops high performance and high secure software, which is easy to operate. And we have two simple products for that, which is Firefly, the network server, and uh, Neota, our IoT uh, data hub. Um, to give you an idea on uh, how we started is that uh, we are founded by uh, E.ON and uh, this company was looking for a network server which was robust and was able to produce uh, a lot of messages which we couldn't find, which they couldn't find. And that's why they uh, started Digimondo and developed their own network server. Uh, next slide, please. So, to give you an idea of the IoT architecture of Digimondo, uh, you see Neota, our IoT data hub in the middle, which collects all the information from any sensor and any network that you can imagine. I mean, if you invest in uh, our technology, in our solution, then it should be future proof. So if there is a new uh, technology, new sensors, but also especially new uh, network technologies like, for example, 5G, then you should be able to implement that network technology also in, in our solution. And uh, the data uh, does not have to stay uh, within our platform. It also can be forwarded to all the other platforms, uh, which are specifically uh, applications or can be a set application, uh, uh, as you can see on the, on the slide. Uh, next slide, please. So just imagine uh, that you are uh, working for a uh, municipality and this municipality, uh, they have a heating system in the city and you have to go into this manhole and you have no idea what the temperature is in, in this manhole and what the issue is in this manhole. And this happened uh, in the past in the city. So every week, yeah, these guys who had to climb, to climb in these manholes checked uh, the, the heating within uh, the heating systems. Yeah, it had to be controlled uh, manually and they didn't know what they could expect. Um, I yeah, do not have to explain, but everybody will understand that uh, in these kind of uh, infrastructures like a uh, heating system is narrow, it's slippery, uh, maybe animals in it, water, you have no idea. And uh, in this city, they had a lot of injuries uh, in the past. So they decided to look for another uh, solution. So next slide, please. So what we uh, propose to them as a solution uh, is a, a LoRa uh, one network, uh, which gives them the opportunity to uh, implement uh, sensors in this uh, heating system so they can detect very easily uh, where there is an issue on temperature or corrosion or yeah, any other um, issue that you can solve with the sensor can be implemented there. Um, the workers, they have a 3D application uh, on which they can see the alarms uh, they also have a map uh, where, on which they can see where the issue is. So if there is an issue, uh, now the, the city uh, can also outsource uh, this, um, uh, this service. So you have to imagine that uh, 24 by 7 people have to be on standby uh, and not everybody wants to do this work anymore. So that's why this solution is a fantastic solution for them, um, and in which they have implemented. Uh, this is the reason why they've implemented uh, this. Uh, next slide, please. So if you look at this uh, picture, uh, it's, it's quite simple. You have the sensors, uh, gateways, uh, 
to which these sensors are connected. Then we have the network server Firefly, and we have the uh, IoT Data Hub uh, NIOTA, uh, on which you can um, implement and develop uh, applications to show maps, uh, uh, to show the status uh, of all the sensors within uh, uh, the network. And the advantage of that is that uh, yeah, uh, you have long life uh, batteries, uh, it's easy to install, and uh, yeah, as the name says, it, it is a, a long range uh, network, so um, it is uh, always available. Uh, next slide, please. So, what was the uh, conclusion of, uh, of this uh, implementation is that, uh, yeah, there, there were some damages on, on pipes uh, which were uh, yeah, difficult to detect uh, and also very costly. So with LoRaWAN, uh, yeah, they simplified the monitoring and uh, yeah, they could get warnings uh, in advance uh, and reduce costs uh, with, uh, with that. And the workers of the municipality, they, uh, yeah, they, they, they could uh, do their work much easier, uh, much quicker, and much uh, yeah, more cost effective uh, for, for that. Um, and it also reduced, it, it, it reduced uh, working time. Uh, next slide, please. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Jat. And uh, with that, I would like to introduce Boris from Minor Zener. Boris Stuckman uh, is Director of Business Development in Smart City, Smart Utility, Smart Mobility, and Smart Building Verticals. Also uh, dealing with innovation at Minor Zener Group. He's an expert on digital strategy and new business areas in IoT solutions. He's a LoRaWAN ambassador representing Minol Zener Group in LoRa Alliance's marketing committee and Smart City Working Group. And he studied business economics at the University of Augsburg, obtaining a Diplom Kaufmann degree and an MBA from the Open University in Milton Keynes. And with that, over to you, Boris. Yeah, thank you, Richard. So, hello, everybody. So, um, Thank you for joining us and I want to give you a short introduction of what the um, you know, Center Group is doing with LoRaWAN for smart cities. And as you realize, cities is a consolidation of many, many buildings and streets and environments. So what we are doing is uh, we're coming from the housing industry, as we know. We're doing a regular heat cost allocation meetings. So this is what you have here seen um, in the building. And uh, so uh, the main difference, what, uh, how you can deploy today LoRaWAN networks is the traditional uh, network scenario is you have an outdoor gateway, which is somewhere on the pole on a light mast or a high building, which you see here in the upper right of this high tower building. So this is the regular rollout of you see of LoRaWAN implementation. So having that an outdoor gateway receives all the sensors from all over the city in different scenarios. And what we are doing, we are putting in a indoor gateways within buildings uh, in the, the cellars or into the, um, under the roof to ensure to reach 100% of all, every single device we built into buildings, which we are using in for submetering. And what you see here is that, um, of course, due to the technology, LoRaWAN can uh, be reached from all the gateways from all across the, the city, in buildings and out of the building. Uh, please, next slide. So we as Minold Zener Connect as a group, we're one of the biggest LoRaWAN rollouts. So why I'm showing this right now, I want to show you that LoRaWAN is no longer a kind of proof of concept technology, because we are one of the big companies proving that uh, you can run these network, and this is a private network which is already up and running in Germany with about more than 500,000 LoRaWAN devices. What kind of devices? This is uh, smoke detectors or it's heat cost allocators, water meters. And this is what we're building in, in apartments, but also in public buildings. The good advantage for us is we're already European um, efficiency economic di directive conformity here. So this means we need to provide meter readings for tenants in apartment buildings 
ongoing actually once per month so that every consumer sees their heating consumption or the water consumption, which actually is not very fast deployed everywhere. So the actual aim of the group is that we want to deploy four million dollar one devices in the next four years and having a network which is dominantly right one of the biggest Lorna networks with more than 5,000 gateways. Most of those are already in the base. So next chart please. So coming from the building into uh, public buildings and apartments, so main use cases, what you can do with LoRaWAN is, for example, detect leakages of water. So getting a detection when your washing machine gets leakage in a building or pipe bursting, pipelines, drippings, and just initiating alarming. Uh, using LoRaWAN sensors for that um, has the big opportunity that you can run it on your own as an apartment owner or as a housing company or even as a city. Some things we have done already is oil level monitoring. Big buildings, public as apartments have still oil um, centers where you uh, need to take care for, do I have enough oil still in my tank? How do I get ad hoc metering measurement of how many oils is in there? Uh, so your facility manager has to go actually to the oil tank to monitor it. And so by using LoRaWAN, you can easily get this data remote to your applications and get an alarm of if you have a downfall of oil supplies or if you want to use it for um, uh, order new oil. There's many, many things you can monitor like uh, air quality in rooms like CO2 or temperature, humidity. You can check fire doors or garage doors. You need to make sure that the doors are closed or also using in the parking areas like uh, electromobility is showing you, the apps is showing you, the, the loading system is taking, but the parking lot in front of it, it's not uh, empty. So this wouldn't help you now. Okay, we go to the next chart, please. So I have one example from the city of Brain Garden in Switzerland from one of our companies, SunConnect. They're using uh, LoRaWAN, for example, having energy monitoring and building data is coming like temperature, humidity, and CO2 out of more than 30 buildings out of the city, which is public buildings and also apartment buildings. Next chart, please. So this is an example of what else you can do with cities. So we're talking about lightning, so air lightning, street lightnings, air quality, photovoltaic, public transportation, waste management, traffics, water quality and water management, pipeline management, parking, noise controls, and this will be shown later on from my colleagues here. So this is an overview of by far not all the opportunities and use cases you can run in the city. So next chart, please. So this is an example from a small city where I live. This is the city of Herrenberg, which is south of Stuttgart. So what you see here next to parking and uh, waste management, this is in the middle what you see here. And it's a quite astounding. It's a small city with about 40,000 people living there. And they're running an own LoRaWAN network. And what they did, for example, they're doing their winter services by built-in temperature measurements and uh, freeze sensors. Uh, also censoring the salt uh, uh, level on a street. So, and they combining this data by monitoring this, the devices in the backend and combining the data with their historical data, what they got from weathers and where they have salt on the streets in the last 20 years. Now they are combining artificial or their knowledge database, combining this with sensor information to get a prediction on where to uh, salt streets in the future. And uh, so they look in the weather forecast and combine this information. So this is done by Laura Warren. So next chart, please. So this is another example also from Switzerland, uh, just to give you an indication of what else you can do. So this was a customer coming up to us and say, okay, uh, you know, we're running on a public bus with four uh, swim, swimming pools and during the day, all the, the batting guests came up to the waiters and asked them, okay, what is the actual temperature in the pools? And then they guided to the to a uh, call board and said, yeah, we, we took this already. They said, yeah, but when you took the, the temperature measure. So it took them several times a day only to take the temperature from the pools. Now what they did, they put in some temperature sensors to the pools, showing it dominantly what you see on the upper right and the down right picture, on a monitor table in front of the, on the uh, entrance gates. 
And what's helpful here, now the customers see what the water temperature is. The service guys don't need to do manual metering any longer. So they just take these temperature figures. And so it's a real value add for the customers and also for the uh, swimming pool company. I think that's what is in giving you a short impression of what else you can do in smart cities with LoRaWAN. Thank you. Richard. Reinhardt. Hello. Yeah. Yes, I do apologize for that little delay. Indeed. And with that, I would like to introduce Reinhard Bischoff from Decent Lab. He's a founder and uh, uh, is also the managing director at Decent Lab. He's got an electrical engineering background from ETH in Zurich. And uh, Decent Lab started already in 2009 deploying its first IoT devices in the field. Over to you, Reinhardt. Thank you, Richard, for the introduction. And, uh, welcome to the part of Decent Lab. As I just said, um, Decent Lab started more than 10 years ago. And when we started the company, um, the focus was from the beginning not having locking devices like in the past, but having always battery operated and wireless connected devices. These devices at that time, lower one did not even exist, but uh, and the word IoT neither. So uh, at that time, it was called wireless sensor networks, and it was about mesh and everything. So even before lower one, we built many use cases in structural health monitoring, smart city projects, and research. And but we switched in 2016 to lower one. With switching to Lori One in early 2016, our use cases moved, becoming a reality. So we were finally being able to roll out what we kind of started with some other technologies before. And so the, ten, the eight years before gave us the possibility to work on the sensing and the data uh, and to read out that the Lori One made it then happen to become real. By now, we have about 30 different devices and we have our own IoT data platform having already collected 2 billion data points uh, with data since 2009 and having about 24,000 time series recorded. Um, with LoRaWAN the IoT came to to larger audience and with that we are now um, serving uh, devices uh, into networks in 50 countries, among them are mega cities. And we have always focused the outdoor and the harsh environment. And so we have our devices deployed in the underground, as shown already by previous um, presenters, overground. We have them in the, above the Arctic Circle for mining, or as well, a smart city can you also look at it. Our refugees camps in Africa are also monitoring rice crops. Reinhardt, could you speak a little bit up, please? So the the sound is very low. Okay, uh, is it better now? Yes, thank you. Okay, so here I summarize really what we already have done. I have not from all of them pictures. Our focus is really in the water cycle, so fresh water, wastewater, uh, reservoir, uh, to monitor these uh, reservoirs, retention basins, and flood monitoring in the urban and more, more denser areas when, where we have now with climate change uh, heavy rain events which can uh, quickly become uh, having high damages in, in uh, the cities. We also do since more than five years air quality monitoring and also related to climate change, urban heat island monitoring, which gives input for city planning. Um, the district heating is already mentioned before. We are collaborating, that's the nice thing here. I see other presenters and we are each other collaborating in certain projects. And this is one of the great advantages uh, in the LoRa Alliance. We do all work together, sometimes in this way or the other ways, to realize such things that can become uh, reality. Uh, next slide. So I took some pictures which I have um, 
from different places in the world. So on the top left, you see um, a, a tailing dam uh, monitoring the level and this is looking up. It's always secure and then we don't have floods, which can happen, as we know from the past in the news. On the right side, on the top right side, um, this is a, a ultrasonic level and displacement sensors deployed in the city of Hong Kong for the city authorities of Hong Kong. And here it's also giving a lot of information um, how the retention basins are used and also the, 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 the rivers. And as you know, it is more and more gets hard to get resources for such flooding um, infrastructure. So you want to use them in a better way. IoT and lower land gives the possibility. On the down left, we have a river monitor in Colombia. And on the right, down right, you see um, deployed one of our very first devices in the sewer system. So in the underground in the manhole, it has been deployed in early 2016. And since then, nobody touched, touched it anymore. So this really shows this is a device which has low maintenance, low battery life. And we are quite proud that this is uh, still active. And that is our showcase saying you don't really have to touch it if you have to once deployed it. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> here on the left, uh, this is um, um, so we are not only working in the water, in the open water, but also in the closed water um, domain. Uh, meaning like in pipelines and water distribution. Uh, we are measuring here the pressures and monitoring water leakages in fresh water distribution networks uh, for the whole region. On the right side, is a sink, as you see, it's really everywhere in, this, in the world we are having such installations monitoring this uh, retention and infrastructure, which can uh, can get flooded and which will it, um, all these infrastructures mainly in the whole world still only manually uh, monitored until now. Now we are instrumenting all of these locations by, by our devices. So cities always come to us and ask us, can we do that with your devices? And we're getting more and more of that and that's uh, a big help in cities. Next slide. So I just mentioned um, why Laura One in our cases uh, gave us such a boost to, to realize our visions. Um, I think one of the most important one was to be able to establish your own co uh, coverage. So coverage by your own initiative, uh, especially when you go to underground, you have no connection at all. And then with Laura One, it made us possible to get uh, with our own uh, way, with the gateway, we can make it happen. But even in the, in the lowest part, we have connectivity without collaborating with, other, with somebody else. So we have even now in the, uh, in the underground sewer system, but also in underground mining, uh, suddenly kind of a wireless coverage for sensors over a very wide area. The lowest energy profile of any wireless IoT standard gave us the highest autonomy, but we have the lowest maintenance cycle, as I mentioned, three years never touched again, and it will continue for several years. Um, also, even have, because of such a low um, data, uh, power consumption, we can stream real day, real time data, like every 10 minutes, even the, the, the measurement is not really changed, but we know every 10 minutes what is happening. And this gives us even more insights over timing of flow changes. We are working with very robust, but also kind of simple electronics. So the, the installation costs are really low and you yeah. know, so, next slide, please. Um, I come here to another real life application in a German city, like a forest before, but here we have uh, 
the city of Germany, they bought um, one of these ultrasonic level sensors from us and they monitored such a retention infrastructure of uh, rainwater. And so city installed it and in the same, some months later, there was a, during summer, a heavy rain event and the authority, the staff people, uh, the local staff checked uh, our sensor, the, the values, and they saw, oh, there's an increase in level of water. And then they moved out in, in this heavy rain went, went on site and saw, okay, we have to clean it away. And they said if they would have seen the data 10 minutes later, they would have got a flood. Three weeks later, but there, there was just one device for a certain region. Three weeks later, there was a heavy rain event nearby in the same city, but not on the same spot. And there, nothing was uh, monitored. And so a flood did happen and the shopping mall was flooded. And so there was a huge damage. Uh, with this story in the very same city, these people experience, uh, it was really, uh, it's really easy to calculate the return of investment because of that they have planned a rollout. Yes, please. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have about 30 different products um, related to water. We have many different applications shown before. Um, we started also six years ago with air quality monitoring, so air pollution in the cities. Um, we are working here with EMPA, which is the Swiss institution which is driving the national network for air pollution for the ones um, so they're um, uh, operating the reference site. With them we develop so air quality station with LoRa with, with LoRa WAM based on electric chemical cells. Here you see a long term measurement by which we conduct with them and we can measure gradients in the city so near the road but also in the background pollution. Um, Maybe one of my main messages is air quality monitoring is really difficult to do. Um, with LoRaWAN and this new technology, we have a chance to get more insights and to have a distributed, um, uh, distributed information about the air pollution happening in the cities. But it's a, it's a, tough, a, a tough challenge and we are now working also with a European project in two countries and cities. Uh, and always related or in combination with air quality domain experience. So that was, in short, uh, about uh, some a glimpse of PC Labs applications. Thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated for that. And now let's move over to Sita Um, who is a enthusiastic product manager at Actility three years back, running the operations for the indirect sales product, Think Park Enterprise and B-Way, working with distributors and resellers. Over to you, Sita. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Uh, let me know if you can hear me well. Um, I will start going quite fast on the on the key trends of, um, of Smart City and uh, Laura One uh, Empowerment, but indeed, uh, First, yeah, uh, of course, mass urbanization, uh, uh, where more and more people are living in the cities um, right now, uh, four billion and more and more to come. Uh, this, this leads to some, of course, uh, uh, operational uh, issues to maintain, operate your city uh, in terms of usage. Uh, you need to uh, save some uh, uh, operations, uh, maintenance, uh, for some different use cases that were already reported. Uh, environment, uh, there was some uh, different use cases uh, also from Decent Lab before. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, we are all faced uh, talking about smart city, to, talking about big cities and environment, uh, greenhouse emissions. Uh, there are some uh, sensors uh, using the LoRaWAN technology that will permit you to uh, to reduce uh, this energy. Uh, it's about also uh, habitants' comfort, uh, safety, security, uh, to propose the 
all your habitants to, uh, uh, to, to address uh, uh, comfort, safety, and security. Um, so a LoRaWAN network uh, will permit you to, yeah, to deploy your horizontal IoT platform solution to enable those different verticals. So we can go on the next slide. Uh, this is a typical NORA1 architecture uh, from the left to the right. Uh, so, of course, you will have your different sensors uh, that for your different use cases uh, for your smart city uh, that will communicate in NORA1. Uh, radio technology, uh, you will have your different base stations. Uh, uh, so, depending on the size of your city, uh, you will deploy a couple of base stations. Uh, everything will go on your network server, uh, activity network server, or any other network server. And the data from your old sensors will be related to uh, data man management software uh, that will deal with your data and where you will be able to uh, extract uh, the data uh, to create some uh, mobile applications uh, for your uh, different, uh, if we talk about cities, employees on the ground, uh, and so also for uh, deploy some end user application uh, for your uh, population and city application. On the next slide. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, now like the others I did about some uh, some uh, real use cases uh, using uh, this technology and how it can address those different uh, uh, problematics that uh, we were referring uh, before. Uh, first is about, uh, I think there was this question, is it also for smaller city? Uh, of course, yeah, you can deploy your LoRaWAN one uh, network uh, based on your um, on your needs, so either a village, a smart city, a big city, uh, a national uh, territory. Uh, this uh, slide is about some historical city, uh, Caldas de Reina in Portugal. We are talking about 50,000 uh, persons population uh, that wanted to uh, become and uh, put in place uh, a smart city uh, using LoRaWAN technology. Um, they deployed a couple of Cisco gateways on the city uh, to address uh, different verticals, uh, water management, waste collection, parking. Uh, so they were using an activity network server, some Cisco gateways, and some sensors from the company Evox. Uh, key figures. Uh, and the result, uh, the waste collection costs were reduced by 67%. Uh, water quality uh, leaks reduced uh, by 33%. And uh, about the parking uh, efficiency, a uh, parking spot it was cut by 50%. So really enriched quality um, of life for the citizens, uh, attractiveness for the city. So we can switch to the next. Slide here, um, it's a different scale. Uh, using uh, here, we are talking about the city of Shanghai, uh, where it, yeah, it's using yeah, Think Park China, so I uh, covered the whole city. Uh, we are more than 250K sensors, I think, heading towards 300K sensors all around the city with some main. Uh, uh, use cases, uh, popular use cases, uh, smoke detectors, uh, of course, env environment, uh, pollu air pollution is uh, something key um, in Shanghai. Uh, acidity and oxygen sensors have been put in place, uh, quality of water, uh, and also uh, yeah, parking space, uh, something really key in those big cities, and uh, manual cover opening detectors. Uh, yeah, to detect if there is some un unauthorized access. So, we can go to the next slide. Uh, so here we are talking about massive uh, sensors deployment uh, 
in France uh, on Orange Network, here we are talking about the national coverage, public coverage. Uh, Veolia, the French uh, water uh, distribution company, uh, basically is replacing uh, uh, all their uh, meter, uh, water meter sensors. So we are here we are talking about, for the moment, at least 3 million uh, LoRa 1 water sen uh, sensors. Uh, they are uh, working on some additional use cases about uh, from pure metering to environmental services, uh, quality of uh, water. Uh, so this, this is really a, a massive uh, deployment in terms of a uh, number of sensors. Can go to the next slide. And finally, a uh, final use case uh, about uh, in, in Australia, uh, NNN Co. Uh, is using activity network servers and uh, has been selected as the uh, smart city uh, 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 provider in terms of uh, uh, technology. Uh, they are uh, leading uh, the second largest government area in Australia, uh, Newcastle. Uh, there is a, a picture here about, uh, and they address uh, smart city by its smart city. Uh, we are talking again about water meters, uh, street lighting, uh, parking bays, and the, they are also partnering with a, a company called Ergon Energy uh, to ensure, uh, here it's about uh, smart energy demand uh, to ensure the distribution grid security about yeah, smart demand response. Uh, so yeah, the, those were the different uh, use case, a real use case on uh, different levels of cities I wanted to mention. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Thank you very much appreciated. And with that, I would like to introduce uh, Stefano Crico, who is uh, Head of Sales at Orbiwise EMEA. Orbiwise, headquartered in Geneva in Switzerland, offer Orbiwan carrier grade network software solution for IoT networks based on LoRaWAN and also the associated advanced network management. Um, this is actually powering the largest IoT network in the world at this point. More on that from Stefano, over to you. Thank you, Richard. I hope you can hear me. Uh, I will be talking specifically regarding a, one use case, which is environmental noise monitoring in smart city. I mean, my colleagues before me have uh, already illustrated a, a huge number of potential use cases uh, which apply to smart city environment. Uh, I will be focusing, uh, and thank you, Boris, for mentioning that before when you showed the map, the map of the city, uh, on noise monitoring. What we did uh, actually was uh, uh, to deploy a, a noise monitoring network in Geneva, making taking advantage of uh, of the coverage, LoRa One coverage, which we already had uh, together with the with the local um, utility is SIG, which already uh, has a, a wide network uh, uh, in a LoRa One network covering the whole Geneva Canton. Um, <clears throat> This will this is enabling actually the autonomous and continuous monitoring of noise levels in the city. Actually, is, is it, it, Carouge is one suburb of Geneva, which is probably uh, a few tens of thousands of people, and um, he, and the monitoring is in uh, in the center of Carouge uh, for for the whole uh, for uh, seven days a week. So it's continuous, and then the, the noise is uh, is uh, the noise collection is done uh, at very high rate. So uh, it it shows that LoRa One can be used also uh, for uh, applications where the the the, the <clears throat> input, the payload coming from the sensors, can can be really dense and really uh, almost I I wouldn't say in real time, but in very very short time. Um, real uh, as I say, real time information is provided, and alerts can be generated when the established noise limits are exceeded. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Here you see a picture of Carouge. Uh, in this uh, slide, we show how the sensors are deployed. I mean, this is one of the sensors. There are around 600 sensors deployed in this uh, uh, in this area. <clears throat> uh, they are mounted sometimes on poles, sometimes just on the wall of the of the of the building. 
uh, and uh, at a certain distance from the city. So the the sensor itself uh, is uh, is including, of course, microphones, battery, and the and the and the LoRa uh, transmitter. Um, you can go on the next level, on the next slide. Sorry. Okay, here we can see uh, two pictures taken, uh, uh, two, two, two um, tables taken from different uh, uh, position in the, uh, from the sensor. <clears throat> the, the, on the left, you see a sensor placed in a local street. And on the right side, you see a collector road where you normally have a much higher level of traffic. So you have much higher level of noise. Uh, during the week and also you during the weekend, especially sometimes of the day. So the 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 um, uh, this is uh, uh, weekend and this is during the week. Okay, uh, in the middle where you see the 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 the, the, the pavement. These are the different levels according to the different uh, um, technology. Uh, um, uh, L that you that you want to 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 measure. Uh, so uh, according if it is uh, over 90% or below 50%, the average, the minimum, and the maximum. Uh, it, this is quite interesting because when you collect this type of information, you can uh, actually um, compare and uh, try to 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 understand uh, where you have uh, most of the noise and uh, if you if you have to take uh, measures in order to limit the noise. <clears throat> Let's go to the next slide. Here you see an interest, a very interesting map of all the sensors, and you see that the averages. Uh, that are taken uh, on three months of measurements are quite different depending on the position of the sensor itself. If it is a, 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 a collector road, like the one that you see on the bottom left side, which is in blue, you have typically much higher noise level than in, in small cities, which, which have um, show actually much less traffic. As I said, I mean, the, the, the measurements are taken every second and then they are sent through the LoRa network every 15 minutes. So they're, they're packaged together and sent uh, over 15 minutes in order to avoid, let's say, uh, too much consumption of the battery. Uh, the number of measurements point is around 600, a bit more. Uh, and then, of course, you can monitor all these parameters, the sound pressure level measured in dB, the number of measuring points, the noise level exceeded for the X percent of the measurement time, minimum max level, and session temperature and battery voltage, so that you can intervene eventually if you see that the battery is going low. Um, some of the sensors are there for more than one year without touching them. Um, the distance between the two, two sensors is typically around 30 meters. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, what we developed also was a, uh, an application to collect the data and show them in a, mice, in, in a nicer graphic uh, way to show plots uh, on how the noise level is going and uh, to show that the, 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 the single spots with the noise level. This is still under development uh, um, in order to have a, a, a productized version in, uh, in, in, in short time. Next slide. Which is the last one, <clears throat> the conclusions. The main achievements that we got uh, was the development of an autonomous noise sensor, which has proven to be working for uh, more than one year. Now I think the first sensors were deployed, uh, I think one and a half or two years ago. Uh, they were deployed in this urban area. The reliability of the sensor during a long period of time has been proven because uh, most of, um, I mean, the sensors are still there. I mean, we had to change uh, batteries to some of them, but not all of them. Uh, and the use of LoRaWAN to collect data. Um, the next steps with 
will be to complete the deployment, development of the application to present and manipulate the data in order to get uh, uh, to, to understand which type of parameters we can set uh, for the alarms and for, uh, for uh, uh, triggering an intervention from the, from the uh, municipality eventually. Uh, develop algorithms to validate the quality of data. Uh, use the data also to produce a 3D noise map, which will be one part of the, of the application. And uh, use the data to determine the need of soundproofing measures on roads. Of course, uh, when we know that this is a parameter which is quite important. Uh, actually, uh, this research and this work is also part of an European funded pro uh, project, which is called Synchronicity. And we work uh, together with the local, uh, uh, the, the, the Canton office uh, that is taking care of the noise uh, pollution and of the noise monitoring. Uh, actually, a paper has been presented to a noise uh, um, uh, event which was uh, run in, in Spain for all Europe uh, in the month of June. Uh, some work is in progress to, to further filter the data and remove parasitic information and to determine the noise level at the road level. That is the maximum allowable uh, noise according to, to the parameters that I've been, I was uh, talking about before. Uh, this is quite interesting. Actually, uh, what we have seen uh, in, uh, is that there is a lot of attention and a lot of uh, um, curiosity from, uh, from, uh, from different uh, bodies, also public bodies, uh, cities, uh, uh, and uh, governments, uh, in order to have uh, this ability to monitor the noise in the cities, especially. Uh, I think I finished my presentation. Thank you to all. Thank you very much.